Hello everyone, I've got another video for y'all. For the past few months, I've been working on six different pieces at the same time here in my paint booth so I can get videos out to y'all more often. Today, I'm gonna be working on this little guy. I got this for free from a neighbor a while back, so if I sell it, it'll be mostly profit. This orange tone finish is pretty much out of style, so I'm gonna update it to a finish that I know sells well for me. We'll give it a white base coat, some brown glazing, and restain the top a dark walnut. Before I get started on this project, I'd like to thank Cove for sponsoring this video and giving me one of their Commuter 2 portable Bluetooth speakers to try out. Whenever I'm out here working in the garage, I really enjoy listening to music. Whenever used as a one-piece speaker, it delivers 360 degree sound. The powerful subwoofers on each end deliver superior sound quality. The speaker can be separated into two pieces to offer surround sound. Operating the speaker is a breeze. You just turn on both speakers at the same time. They will pair to each other. Then you can pair it to your phone, tablet, or PC to start listening to music. Personally, I like to hang it from the top of my paint booth so no matter where I'm working, I can hear the music clearly. This speaker is water resistant, but it's not waterproof, which means it's all right to have near the hot tub and pool, but not in it. The speaker works for up to seven hours on a single battery charge. In addition to black, they have four new colors, sand, concrete, stone, and the limited edition terracotta. The speaker is normally $250, but I've got a discount code for 67% off so that you can get this speaker for $82.50. Just use code ThatShabbyGuy at checkout. I've also got a link down in the description that you can click. Go check it out. It's a great speaker. I really enjoy it. Thanks again, Cove. Let's get back to the project. The first thing I'm going to do is remove all of the hardware and put it in a safe place so I don't lose any of it and keep it separate from all of the other pieces I'm working on. To clean this piece, I'm using Super Clean. It's very important to clean your furniture before you paint it. Dirt and grime can interfere with your paint's finish, causing it to peel easily and also causes stains in the paint. It's generally a good idea to clean out the inside of furniture before you sell it. This is just common courtesy. Nobody wants somebody else's old dust. At some point, somebody's dog used this dresser as a chew toy, so I'm gonna use some wood filler to fill this in, reshape it, and sand it. It doesn't have to be perfect, just passable. To sand it, I'm going to be using these Surf Prep Rad Pads, perfect for what I'm trying to do right now. I chose to use the medium grit. The goal was to just follow the lines of the original wood and bring the corner to a point. It looks pretty close, it's not an exact copy, but no one's going to be able to notice. For this project, I decided to use my Surf Prep sanders to strip the top. The 3x4 is a detail sander and while it can strip, it doesn't strip nearly as fast as the 5 inch. So I'm going to use the 5 inch to strip the larger areas with 80 grit sandpaper and the 3x4 to get the trim. To strip the trim, I'm using this 80 grit screen. This screen allows the particles I'm sanding to get sucked up by the vacuum instead of building up on the surface like regular sandpaper. These are available for the five inch, I just didn't have them at the time. After sanding everything with 80 grit sandpaper, everything is looking pretty good, but it still needs to be sanded with finer sandpaper several times. We're gonna go with 120 grit sandpaper, 180 grit sandpaper, and then 220 grit sandpaper so that any scratch marks that were caused by the stripping are sanded out and everything is smooth and ready to be stained. 
this is what the top looks like after its final sanding. Now it's time to sand the body to get it ready for paint. To prep the base of the dresser, I'm going to be using this spongy interface pad with 220 grit sandpaper on it. A lot of times when you see surf prep sanders being used, you see the spongy sanding pads. But what you don't usually see is this interface pad that you can use with any of their sandpaper. The sanding sponges are more expensive and mostly only need to be used in high detail situations. You can save yourself a lot of money by using this interface pad and sandpaper instead. All I want to do is scuff up the surface of this wood so that the paint has something to adhere to. We don't need to get too crazy and sand all the way through to the wood. Once everything is sanded, I come back and dust everything off and wipe it down with a damp cloth. I just forgot to record it this time. This thing is ready for paint. I just need to tape off the top so I don't get anything on my wood. To protect the top, I prefer to use masking paper and a quality painter's tape. Cheaper tapes tend to not hold very well. And since I'm going to be painting this piece with my sprayer, I don't want to take any chances at getting paint on my newly stripped wood. The first paint I'm going to be applying is this Rust-Oleum Flat White Spray Paint. I use this as a primer and sealer to give my paint a little bit something better to adhere to and also seal in any bleeds that might pop up whenever I apply water-based paint later on. I usually apply two or three thin coats, waiting about 15 minutes in between each coat, and then I'm ready to move on. For the base coat, I'm going to be spraying this Valspar Signature. This is an antique white, another mist tint that didn't have a name, I'm sorry. Just go get an antique white that looks similar. On this piece, I'm using my Graco Project Painter Plus to apply the paint in three thin coats, allowing it to dry about 30 minutes in between each coat. It got fairly cold shortly after I applied the last coat of paint, so I allowed this to dry for a few days before moving on. After giving everything a little bit to dry, I removed the tape from the top so that I could get ready to stain it. It's a good idea to use some fine sandpaper to remove any residue from tape that's applied to the wood so it doesn't interfere with your stain job later on. Before I apply my stain, I'm going to apply this pre-stain that allows you to penetrate the wood a lot better. You don't see me use this very often, but it's usually a good idea to use it to prevent any splotchiness from happening. It doesn't always happen, but when it happens, it's too late, so better safe than sorry. For the wood stain, I'm using Minwax's Dark Walnut Oil-Based Wood Stain. This is very easy to use. Just brush it on, leave it for about 15 minutes, and then wipe it off. If it's not dark enough, you can come back and apply more after a few hours. With the stain applied, I just need to wait for about 15 minutes. You can see I got some down here on the paint. That doesn't matter. I'll show you why a little bit later on. 
As I wiped off the stain, I felt like it wasn't dark enough and was still a little bit orange, so I came back with some ebony wood stain to darken it up. After I wiped the ebony stain off, I was a lot happier with the results. Just need to let this dry for a few hours and then I can top coat it. For now, I can move on to glazing the body. For my glazing or antiquing, I'm going to be using the same dark walnut wood stain that I used on the top over my base coat that I previously painted. This is going to tint the paint and lead the stain in crevices and detailed areas, overall giving the piece a lot more depth. I tend to do an initial wipe down which saturates the rag with wood stain. I then fold the rag to find a clean area and wipe it down again, which allows me to get a lighter tone and blend everything together without a bunch of streaks. It's really important to be able to get the same results on all sides of the dresser and the drawers so that everything matches perfectly when it's all put together. With the base finished, I can move on to the drawers. You can see where I got the stain on it earlier. Oil-based wood stain will re-wet itself when you apply it over it again. So this is something I didn't have to stress out about earlier. I can just apply more wood stain on it, wipe it off, and keep going. The process is the same for the drawers as I did on the body, but after I wipe them down, I'll place them in the body of the dresser and then take a step back to make sure that it matches, wipe down to make any adjustments, and then take a step back again to make sure everything is perfect. To protect this piece, I'm using Minwax Aerosol Lacquer in a Satin Finish. As I finished this piece up, the weather had turned cold, so I opted to use this instead of water-based polyurethane so that I didn't have to worry about any imperfections. When I use Aerosol Lacquer, I'll spray about three thin coats, allowing it to dry about 15 to 30 minutes in between each coat depending on the weather. Then I'll come back with some fine sandpaper to sand everything smooth and make sure there are no bumps and spray one final coat a little bit thicker to get a very smooth finish. This is the third coat. Because I'm spraying thin coats, the top can get a little bit bumpy, so I use fine sandpaper and sand it very lightly just to knock down the bumps, dust it off, and then it's ready for a thicker final coat. To apply the last coat a little bit thicker, all I do is move my arm a little bit slower. You don't want to get the can too close or you'll end up getting lines in your finish. Also, I know someone out there is going to tell me I'm not holding this can perpendicular to the surface, but it spits when it gets empty, so you got to hold it like this. Here's what the top looks like after the last coat is applied, still wet and drying, it looks great, I'm ready to move on to the body. I usually don't have to do the light sanding on the body like I do on the top because gravity 
actually tends to do a lot of the work and keep everything smooth. After the final coat, I pulled out the drawers and got those protected before I moved on to the hardware. For this piece, I decided to keep the original hardware, but it needed to be darkened up, so I taped over the marble drop pools and then used this Rust-Oleum Oil Rub Bronze spray paint to darken up the hardware so it would match the new finish a lot better. When doing this, it's a good idea to use light coats just like everything else. You don't want to make it so thick that it takes forever to dry. Thin coats takes a lot less time to dry and you'll end up getting a much smoother finish in the long run. I made sure to flip the drop pulls over so that I could get both sides of the handle. After everything is dry, I remove the tape and I'm ready to reinstall these and get finished with this piece. I'm really happy about how this piece turned out. I didn't have a whole bunch of surprises this time. Everything came out exactly how I envisioned it. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this piece. Be sure that you check back in two weeks. I have five more pieces to share with y'all. Thanks again for watching this video. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit the button right now so you see these other videos that I'm gonna be uploading soon. Hit the bell for notifications, share this video with your friends, and I'll see y'all again soon.